You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Scottish Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be your host as always. It's been a very busy week in the sporting world. We have a new boxing heavyweight champion. We have USA about to dominate the Ryder Cup. The second best team in France didn't win at their home turf on Saturday. <laughs> Stuart and did, Auchinleck did, and we have an, another busy weekend of Scottish football to look forward to and look back on. We are going to go through the panel before we get into the nitty gritty. Wilson, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Thanks very much for joining me as always. The pleasure's all mine. Glad we've got a full squad tonight to pick from. No cancellations or injury doubts, but happy to be here. Definitely. We are also joined by Shankers, coming off a performance to get through the third round of the Scottish Cup. Shankers, welcome back on. Pleasure to be able to be on as always. Hi, thanks for having me, Scott. That was probably one of your best intros that I've, that I've heard. You've definitely got that. Sitting in front of you, ready just to be half the dog. We are joined as well, spending more time in the BBC right now than David Dimbleby, Rory Loy. Rory, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. So, good this week, Pikey. I know. That's why I'm on the show tonight. He's thought of all this today. Get on the show tonight. Never mind one day. Aye, that's... <laughs> oh, dearie me. Uh, good to be here as always. Definitely. It's been another busy week in Scottish football. We're going to just get through the panel quickly before we look at the results. Wilson, what was your storyline of the weekend? Oh, again, I know this is a Scottish football show, but I think, to be fair, the Ryder Cup's kind of dominated um, the weekend's sporting calendar, um, which has, hasn't been particularly great um, for Europe, but it's been, it's, been, it's been entertaining to watch, you know I, I'm 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 one of these guys. I, I can watch any sport at an elite level, whether it be cricket or gymnastics. See people on top of their game. So it's always very. I always like like to watch it. But it's just a shame that Europe haven't particularly competed very well. But um, and also obviously Stewart's victory Saturday keeps us in the hunt after four games. <laughs> Definitely sitting second in the Yorkshire Amateur League so far. Shankers, what was your storyline of the weekend? Um, I probably some similar to. What you've said at the start of the show with, with the, the boxing and the, and the golf, it's been a, a good weekend. There's a few, few shock results, uh, Scottish football, English football as well. So it's been, it's been a good weekend, yeah, definitely. Rory, give us a storyline for the weekend. Um, probably, um, probably the, the story which will leak into next week two underperforming old firm sides. Um, Playing well below what they're capable of. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Well, I, I knew I knew Rory wasn't going to say that they'd fail in Hamilton Aki's game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, get into that that. Going to be shout. Wow. we'll get into that later. I did a fascinating game for Rory to watch at East End Park. But we'll get into the, the results in the Scottish Premiership. We'll start off with Dundee now Rangers won. Joe Arable gave Rangers the victory. Shankers, I'll start with you. Rangers are grinding out results, but that was really it because they were absolutely awful. I, I suppose it, it, it's a good sign uh, winning games when you're not playing well. Uh, that's the, the best outcome if you've not got a good performance, just, just win the game and get three points. Uh, obviously, go out of jail a wee bit with the, with the penalty. Um, well done, the missing the penalty. So, 1 0, clean sheet, three points uh, away from home. Dundee struggling a wee bit just now. Um, Griffiths needs to kind of, kind of find form and uh, and start scoring goals because he looked like they're only kind of they're only I'm not saying he's their only uh, chance of goals but a, a player like him uh, playing up front for them you would you would be expecting him to be the a kind of main man uh, but they, they seem to be struggling just now and, and as Rory says Rangers kind of under underperforming but getting the getting the result is probably the kind of main focus uh, just now but. It's no good to watch. They just they they they'll be hoping that can maybe click uh, soon and start putting in a, a run of good performances and and going and winning games conventionally rather than scraping them uh, through at the moment that what they have been doing the, the last few weeks. Rory, you said at the start of the show you felt Rangers were underperforming. What do you think is the reason for that? 
I think it's difficult when you're sitting looking at a team that didn't get beat all last year. You know, they set the bar so high, they didn't they? You know, they set, I think they set a record with goals conceded as well. So I think when you're setting that kind of standard, the, the only real way is down. Um, Shankar says, you know, they're, they're still picking up wins and things. And I, I think a 1 0 win in the fashion they won it away to Dundee is, is acceptable in, in April and May when it's that business end of the season where nothing else matters. I think at this point in the season, you're looking for a little bit more. From a manager's point of view, I would imagine that Steven Gerrard will be looking going, that's that's kind of worrying what, yeah. what I'm seeing here. Didn't he see much of the game, just the highlights and things. Um, but, um, you know, by all means, Dundee looked like they had their chances. Paul McMullen looked good. Lee Griffiths had a half a chance for most people, what you would consider a chance for Lee Griffiths. So, I, I, th- I think that results are king. But at this point in the season, I think it's got to be a concern for Steven Gerrard how Rangers are performing, why are they performing that way, I'm not quite sure. I think if you're going to draw comparisons to last season, you're always going to end up a little bit underwhelmed, is what I would say. Uh, they did win, they weren't at their best, they move on, but we've been saying it for a, you know, a good few weeks now. You know, something you know, it will change, it will click. But there's no there's no real signs of that. I'm not sure Lundstrom and Davis can play in the same team. They seem quite similar. I think everyone expected a Lundstrom to be slightly different to the way he plays. He kind of sits and tries to control the tempo of the game. I don't think it's any surprise. He's probably I thought he was probably one of the few players that can receive past Mark Sister because I thought he did carry the ball quite well. But I think, I think he does no. does better when Davis isn't there. No. Um, which is no slight on Davis. Obviously, he's been the main man for years, and for me, he will be over Lundstrom for the remainder of the season. Although Lundstrom maybe came in at times, but. Uh, Aribo, you know, is always capable, but it's difficult to, to put your finger on why it's happening. Um, if Rangers had won the league last year by six or seven points, had lost a couple of games, had conceded a few more goals, are we looking at this season going, ah, it's been a good start, one defeat? Or is it unbeaten Rangers last season conceded a handful <laughs> of goals? Um, you know, it's not been good enough. So it's maybe a bit, a little bit of perspective, but at the same time, I, I do think that given the time of year it is and the time of the season it is, that that it's that it is a cause for concern. Well, so what led to Rangers winning the game yesterday, and what was your thoughts in the the game as a whole? Well, I think as uh, Rory mentioned, it's uh, winning the games pivotal. You know, get the three points and up the road. Um, f- first of all, it was a very good goal Rangers scored. It was a good touch from Morales, great finish from Aribo. Um, again, I saw bits and bobs of it. I didn't particularly think, you know, it was as bad as people make out. I thought uh, McMullen played really well for uh, Dundee. Obviously, Cummings misses a penalty deliberately to help his old team out. Um, <laughs> but as I say, I, I don't I mean you. You guys are more well versed. You obviously see a lot more of Rangers than I than I uh, choose to watch. What What do you think that the problems here? Because again, I'm, I look at it as if you know they won the game not care you know what do you think's missing that I, I don't I just think winning's everything so they're at the top of the league they've won the games I don't think there's a need for an investigation because some sometimes we'd rather play rubbish and win than be absolutely brilliant and, and not win so but again I don't watch enough of Rangers um, to say oh they're missing Kent or they're missing whoever as I say going to Dundee's never ever easy um, so just to go and win the game then you know I don't think there's a problem there but again if Rangers want to win in style, no, they're not doing that. Of course they're not, but they're, they're still winning. I, I wouldn't say Rangers have got somebody this season where you say, like, he's been absolutely brilliant. Ken, like, not all his games, but like he's put in, Ken, five, six, six seven a, I think you good performances. As a whole, though. I don't think there's a particular game that you can look back and say they were really good there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 lo- I'm looking at it from someone that doesn't support Rangers, like you three. Um <laughs> Now, again, as I say, Mark and Rory are obviously more well-versed. Do, do they lack confidence that John McLaughlin's in goals? I wouldn't say I was any more well-versed than you are. I catch the highlights in sports scene, depending on when the game's on or whatever else. Um, but what I would say I mean, is... You, you, you have a more... You, you, your knowledge is far greater than mine in terms of... I'm looking at it thinking, well, Ryan Kent's one of their best players and he's no playing. Maybe that's where they struggle. Or Morales is injured, yeah. he's no playing... Um, you know, so I that, that, that's the, only I can you, you can maybe give a wee bit more I insight. Think on the, I think on the performance side of things, I you want to win games, but 
My point about that was merely the time of the season. You, you, Rangers can't consistently perform like that and expect to win games. And that's where the difficulty is. It's acceptable to do that in April because there's no many games left and it's about holding your nerve and getting over the line. And that's probably the reason why a performance like that would happen. Performance like that in September is worrying. Ah, you want to win games, but you'll be looking at that going, well, if we perform like that next week, then the following week, it's inevitable we're not going to win every but single is, game. Is, is there an element, though, that... The, the Rangers squad is very good on paper. Again, you talk about performances, but are they looking at the rest of the teams going? No, I don't think we'll, we'll, I don't, we'll probably win this league. But I don't think that would be allowed. Like, I, don't, I don't think, Gerard, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it would be allowed. But I mean, I don't we think talk so. about this all We don't look at league tables till April, May. These guys right. are buying the paper every single day, looking going right. We're fifteen goals and eight points ahead of that lot. I don't. I don't think they would have that attitude or that approach. Absolutely not. I. I, I think part of the problem is perspective based on last season. I think. It, it, Rangers are never going to be able to live up to last season. It's it's now impossible to to go through another full league season unbeaten. It's not sustainable to be able to do that. And the ah, you could look at performances and say they're not as good as last season, which they clearly are not. But it, it, Rangers are always going to fall short if you're going to compare that to last season. Do you know how though the bit, uh, there's another thing like I'll go to Shankers here. Do you know how like Tavernier, Goldson, probably two of the best players last season. They're slack a lot, but. I mean, Goldson didn't have a good game. Tavernier was not his best yesterday. Can you see a difference there? Like they're not as maybe solid at the back as they were last season. Is that why the teams are getting more chances? Well, it's last season for how good they were, but let's like, not be kidding. The, the, the way that they're playing this season, maybe lacking, leaking goals defensively, stuff like that, is what they were like for the past two or three years before right. last season. So we, we knew that... Uh, they were, that's what they were capable of at, at times, been been slack and stuff like that. But I think you nowadays Tavernier can't even afford to be, be slack or have a few bad performances because I don't think Gerard would think twice about just putting Barton in and in front of him. It's different with Golton uh, for me because I think he's Rangers' best uh, centre back, and I think it's Golton and then somebody else is always the partnership. Whereas it's Balogun Halander. Uh, Simpson are they're the other three and they're get, kind of getting rotated and every one of them's always partnering uh, Goldson but they, I actually thought see the Dundee United game and Rangers lost of course there's no good losing but part of me thought thank God they've, they've lost this early just to get the, the defeat out, out of the way and, and so they're not going on this season and there's all this pressure to go and beat and all that to get the, the defeat in uh, I've done the United quite early on, and I thought, right, maybe that will take some pressure off, and they can relax and, and, and play a bit better and, and start winning games more comfortable with good performances. But if, I, I really don't know what what is happening now. But the only bonus is that they're winning games, uh, even when they're not playing well. Uh, that's the that's the only bonus if if you're not having a good performance that, that you're winning games. But it's a strange one. McGregor, is McGregor injured or so. Do you think that's maybe like thinking towards the future, like? Obviously, McGregor's reaching reaching an age. Are they maybe giving McLaughlin more games as a kind of because McGregor McGregor can't go on forever. Like he's he can't play the same amount of games. Same with Davis as well. Like they're, they're reaching an age where you need to slow down a bit. Is that I it? think I don't think McGregor is the type of person that that was want to be like sit out one or two games. Yeah. Or I think he, if he got offered the choice to play every single game, I think he would. I don't think he would. He's happy when he's when he's no playing and it's. Signing them for a, for another year and then playing them here and there, I, I don't I don't get that. If if you're going to keep them for a year, uh, you signed them for another year this season. Play them and you get your league. Your league's your, your bread and butter. It's, yeah, I, I totally agree. Play thirty eight games uh, and to to win the league, and I don't really get why your number one goalie isn't playing. We spoke about it I think a few weeks ago when he when he never played. I don't know. Rangers have got a game midweek and. In Europe, I don't know if they're looking towards that, but for me, the league's the most important thing. Yeah. You've got to play your best players, and McGregor's the number one, and, and rightly so. And it's just a bit strange how how it, it, it seems to get. I didn't say it's dropped; like it's more rested than than dropped. I just find it a bit strange at, at times. Same with like said, Davis. Davis is for me pro. I mean, Mara, and, and then it's some Delta in, in the three, and, and he doesn't play yesterday as well, but. Could there, could there be an element of now Celtic obviously suffered from this could the likes of Goals and Taverne who were undoubtedly two of the best players last year could they have been promised moves 
and then have slightly kind of down tools, you know, like IR and French Eddie because their performance, because last year everyone was all over that, saying, oh, IR's down tools, promised a move, Eddie's down tools, promised a move. Could that possibly have happened? Could these guys have said, right, we stopped your 10 in a row, we, we want back out? I think um, uh, you love a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I think. Um, well, we spoke after, about this at length every week last year. I've seen it on the show. We went from being the best centre half in the league to the worst. Right, well, Golden's certainly not been the worst centre back in the league. Um, that's that's without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I watched him yesterday. <laughs> we kept a clean sheet. <laughs> well, we're Bobby Madden in charge. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Yeah, half in uh, doubt, half in doubt, blame the ref. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, anyway. Ayer, Ayer, Ayer wasn't the worst defender in the league either, but he obviously down tools to a certain extent. I guess His performances fun. during. I mean, to, to, to suggest that Bolton is the worst has been the worst centre back in the league is for me is outrageous. But anyway, I think that um, rather than these type of type of theories, you know, promised a move, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, Golden has got a year left to run in his contract. You know, he, you know, he, he performs well for I, a year. I have a contract as well. If 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 Goldson performs well, I'm not sure where Christopher Ayer comes into this, but you know, Connor I Goldson. Made, I was making a comparison that Ayer went from being a smashing defender every week to obviously being well, it looked like promised a move and then was held to Celtic for another season. He won the quadruple treble and then it looked like he just down tools. His performance is totally deteriorated. So now, Goldson Goldson last year to this year and his performance have deteriorated. So, so if you look at Goldson and what he's got left in his contract, a, a, a cracking season this year, you know, he's actually going to go on and earn and get a much better move than he potentially would have done by somebody buying him. So the motivation to go on and play well up until January and then January to the summer, for me, is far greater this year for Goldson than it was last year, if that's his train of thought. That's just my opinion. But I think it's more potentially to do with, you know, Rangers are still playing their 4 3 3. They're still playing a very similar style of play, a very similar way of playing from last year. Have teams found a way to try and stifle how they play? Are they approaching yep. games against Rangers slightly differently? Yeah. Are they setting up to stop certain players? Um, that, that could be an element of it. Um, you know, the opposition and the way they think about it. I, I don't believe that they think the league's too easy because the, the, these, these games that they think are too easy are the teams that are taking points off them. So, you know, that's, that can't be for me the case. But what I will say is that I think it may potentially be something like that. That's not to say that Gerard should change his formation or change his philosophy. But I think that potentially teams have, over the period of time, have come up with a way of stopping Rangers playing. Um, and listen, it's, it's undoubted that Taverni and Goldson haven't been as good as last year. I mean, that's clear to see. But... I don't believe for a second that they're downed tools because they were promised to move. And I've said it on the show before. I don't think Taverni could get a better club than where he is at the moment. I think Goldson could potentially... I think a Premier League club, a, a Brighton, whoever else... Norwich. Could, Norwich. Uh, he could come in and sign Conor Goldson. I'm not sure that a club like that would come in and sign Taverni. I'd, for me, Taverni would, you know, is fitted to Rangers, he's suited to Rangers, he's the captain. I don't see any benefit and I don't see who James Taverni is going to go to Stephen Gerrard and go, you know, promise, promise a move, whatever else. I don't know where they would go. I think they'll they, sell Patterson then, they'd be getting rid of Patterson first before Taverni. I don't know what they'll do, but I don't think it would be... My, my personal opinion is that James Taverni is... If, if I was James Taverni, his style of play... His assets, what he's good at, getting forward. Rangers dominate nearly every game they play. Possession-wise, they may not play great all the time. It suits him to a T, an absolute T. You know, defensively at times, he's suspect. I think if he goes to a team down south, that could really show him up. I genuinely think that, think that. Now, what Rangers decide to do is obviously totally up to them, but I think it may come down to the shape. But I certainly don't buy any, any ideas that players are down in tools or they've been promised moves. I, I just don't buy into that at all. Wilson, are you anything else you want to add in the game as a whole? Was there a particular performance that caught your eye? <laughs> Obviously, the referee's performance. And it's an ongoing thing in this show when Bobby Madden takes charge of Rangers. Now, again, and I know there was highlights of other refereeing issues over the weekend, um, but I, I, maybe it's me, and I'm, I'm totally blaming me. Maybe I don't understand the ruling, um, but how the goalkeeper isn't sent off, in the same way he wasn't sent off at St. Johnson for his horror tackle, either ah, yeah. outside the box. Yeah. I don't I don't get this 
double jeopardy or whatever it is and it's yeah, only a booking there's, there's a, Bob there's, Mullen is going to tap that ball into an empty net and he's side down and it's it's a yellow card and a penalty now the, the penalty is something totally different but I don't I don't get the decision not to send so them off the rule the, the, the rule is if, jo, if, if John McLaughlin makes a genuine attempt to play the ball then <clears> it would be a yellow card if he has not made a genuine attempt to play the ball and has simply stopped the player from scoring then it would be a red card well, that's why I, I think I right. think that's the latter. He stopped the player from scoring. He's going to tap that. And that's certainly open debate. And and again, and again, but I, I mean, I, I watched sports scene and uh, big Chris Awilamo and McFadden both said that the decision was right. It was a, it was a yellow card. I watched James McPeak's interview as well, and wh- whatever he said, I thought was a wee bit critical of Bobby Madden in terms of what he said. James, after McPeak, it. James McPeak was talking about clear goal scoring opportunities when. <clears throat> I mean, that's not really anything to do with it. What's to do with it is whether John McLaughlin made or didn't make a genuine attempt to play the ball. That's what it comes down to. But, but, but I always think, and I'm not just talking about Rangers here, I was, surely they are going to make, they are trying to make a genuine attempt <laughs> for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> a goal is never coming out saying, I'm going to break that striker's leg, I'm going to break <laughs> the striker's leg. They're surely going to make an attempt on the ball. Now, I'm not saying Bobby Madden's wrong. What I'm saying is, I don't really get the ruling in some instances and some not. And it's a, it's a oh, bit like the, I, I'm not the saying early perfect, decision at Celtic today. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying Bobby, I mean, if the pros, and again, I'm all about McFadden, they're saying it's a yellow and it's a penalty. That, that's absolutely fine. Um, I, I just don't understand it because it looked to me still as... Open for debate. Still, open, still open for debate, regardless of who says what. You can have he's, still, he's still bringing the player down there. And it's for me, it's a red card all day long. I think by the rule book, it's a yellow, but when you're seeing it with your own eyes, you're just thinking, how, how is it not a red card? Like, you're, you're, you're stopping a goal. I know they've obviously got the penalty for it. But... The, th- the thing is, at the end of the day, was McGregor on the bench? Yeah. So uh-huh. they're bringing on Alan McGregor. Maybe they'd rather have a shot against John McLaughlin than McGregor, to be fair. So. Uh, see, just going uh-huh. back on the, the Tavon Bolton thing, he, do you think there's, there's a reason why they're both I'm not saying up here playing football because I, I love Scottish football and, and Rangers and Celtic and they're, they're, they're top teams and that. But I think there's a reason why they're not. There is no teams coming in for them. I mean, they've all been pressed, but like I'm meaning like a serious move because like unless you're going to a top eight, ten, that uh, push in the Premier League uh, uh, in England, it's like a a, a step down, I would say, club club wise. Like, I mean, at Rangers, I think there's a reason why they they, they aren't playing, uh, going to like a West Ham or a, an Everton or something like that. They just they're just teams that have just thought uh, off the top of my head. I think there's a reason, why, maybe because they are they're pretty suspect sometimes uh, defensively. I know they had great seasons last season, but uh, there there always is that that element of a doubt at times with me, and especially like maybe. European uh, games when you're playing uh, like like the Leon top teams and you and you see them getting getting found out. They they think that's why they they are still at Rangers and, and playing in, in Scotland rather than teams coming in for them. So. I think sometimes as we, as we just kind of mentioned there, though a lot of folk don't have respect for the SPL and they think well if they're playing up in the SPL, uh, you know they can't they can't be that good. But Rory makes a good point like. Taverni is obviously suited to Rangers still in the way Rangers plays because he's been he was successful last season. You know, he's kind of can get forward, keeps possession as well, good delivery usually. Um, Goldson, I just always think sometimes with, with the Premiership teams in England, even the likes of your Burnley's, they've got so much money to spend. Now, if they, if they come up here and take a gamble, and let's just say, I don't know how much he's worth, say they say, right, we'll give you 10 million for Conor Goldson. If Conor Goldson goes down there and has a shocker, you know, they'll be thinking, imagine we should 10 million how many we could get somebody for Atletico Madrid for 20 million. So I think there's a wee bit of kind of disrespect in terms of how well guys, I mean, let's obviously not last year, but maybe the last two seasons, Ryan Christie was very good at Celtic, right? I'm not saying he was the best player in the SPL or anything like that, but he was very good for a couple of years. Who, oh, sorry? Ryan Christie. Christie. But he's at Bournemouth. Look how well Callum McGregor did in the Euros. You know, and how well yesterday, Christy. Was it Bournemouth? Shank would be their best player. <laughs> but, you know, you've got, you've got the likes of Callum um, in terms of who's been one of Celtic's best players for him. Like, again, teams may have bid, we don't know. But I thought his performance at the Euros, thinking 
again, it might not have been a top eight team, but he'll get a move. And we don't know. If, nobody's come in for him. I think, on the other hand, you know, you look at Kamara, Rangers up in the daft. I think they've been having a long-term deal because they must know someone's going to come in, yeah. you know, with big a money. Lot, lot myself, yeah, absolutely. And, and and that's where I, but I say, I think there's a wee bit of disrespect to, towards that. And I always like that. Whether it's a Rangers player or a Celtic player, I always like, if they're going to leave a club like Celtic Rangers, I want them to go to that club and show that they're just as good as they were up here. I like how you say there's a bit of disrespect and then you're going boom with an absolute pressure. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely. No, but, but what I'm saying is for the high standards that Ryan Christie set. Ah, yeah, I know. Okay, I know what you to, mean. It's for him to go to Bournemouth is nothing short of embarrassing. I, I would I say, to be honest, I just think he wanted to put the, yeah. the whole oh, I, I, I totally agree with that. Is, right? Right. But he shouldn't be going to... And that, that's what I'm saying. If you, you're looking at, obviously, one of your major assets is, is Glenn Kamara. Now, if Glenn Kamara signs for Bournemouth, you'd be going, what? I wish he did. Do you know what I mean? Because Christie had that kind of impact at Celtic for a couple of seasons, you know? Aye. Very less Thank you. Just on the tap, the tap to learn anything, you, you mentioned why is he not getting a move and you picked a couple of clubs, right? You picked Everton. And that was kind of my point. See if I'm building a Rangers team to play in the SPL, right? T- Tavernier is my right back and Seamus Coleman's, is, Seamus Coleman's on my bench. See if I'm building an Everton team to play in the Premier League, Seamus Coleman's in my team and Tavernier's in the bench. See if I've got them both in my squad at Rangers. For me, Coleman, I would play Coleman in Europe and I would play Tavernier in, on the league games because of the type of, you know, the way they play. And I don't think Aye. there's enough teams uh, down in England out with your top four who dominate the football enough to go and say, we want James Tavernier because that's the way he plays. For me, all his assets. Yeah, well, if, you, are if he was like an if he was like an Norwich, he's maybe defensive weaknesses would be kind of exposed a bit more. Like it's not that. even that they would be exposed because you know that would be saying that he's not a good defender. I'm not saying he's not a good defender, but it's certainly not. And I know the modern day fullback and all the rest of it, but he still need to be able to defend. Yeah, and Tavernier can defend. For me, he can defend well enough to play in a in a, in a Rangers team that are on top most weeks. I don't think, and probably the results in Europe, Shankers maybe go back to what you're touching on. Maybe teams are looking at it and going, hmm, when push comes to shove, I they're progressing, but they are conceding an average of, I don't know, one, two, three goals per game, which in the grand scheme of things, you know, the Europa League is probably a level below the Premier League. Aye. Right, we'll move on to going through the other games in the, the Premiership that took place this weekend. Hearts got a 3-0 win over Livingston. Very impressive performance. Smith with a goal, Liam Boyce with a penalty, and then Cochran get the third. Rory, that was an impressive performance. We had who stood out here. For Hearts? Hearts, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, just on Dundee as well, by the way, I think they'll be fine. They're playing enough good stuff and I think they will come good. But um, I think with <laughs> Hearts, um, oh, they're flying. Look, uh, an impressive win. It's quite often with these teams and any sort of run, it's always that fixture where you go, really, like, you go and you, you do well and you beat Celtic and then you, you go on and you, you win two or three games, you know, you get a a draw in the derby and all the rest of it and then it's a it's almost a nothing game where these types of runs come to an end but Livingston you know fresh off beating beating Celtic last week and um, you know they ran Rangers close enough if it wasn't for a, for a mistake by the goalkeeper might have might have nicked a draw out it um, you know they turned up and they were swept aside um, it's, Hearts look good Ben Ingame looks good in the middle of the pitch yeah he stood out um, Ben Woodburn looks he's not scoring many goals but he, he looks a good player Boy Cochran Bur- looks a good player he looks good. Liam Boyce is scoring goals. Craig Gordon and, and Nets. Can't really grumble. And Robbie Nielsen deserves a lot of credit because he's got his critics. He's one of these managers that just seems to be no well liked. And I don't mean personal. I just mean, I don't know. He just one bad result or one. He just seems to be this kind of figure who comes under pressure pretty quickly. When you actually look at what he's done in 18 months, it's, it's nothing short of miraculous at times. You know, Hearts were struggling massively when he took over. So I feel credit to him. But um, Hearts look... Hearts look fantastic. Um, Cochran, Kingsley, Suter, you run through their team and aye, each and every one of them, Barry Mackay is quite an astute sign as well. So, aye, they've, get, they've certainly got the potential. It's just whether they've got the longevity. C- c- can you really keep that form up over the course of a season? That's yet to be seen. Um, but they've certainly started the season well. Well, so what's your... Anything to do with the, the other boy, Cochran, that used to be a heart to a relation? No, no thanks. Don't think so, no. Knows that, but Wilson, who stood out to you in the Hearts' perspective? Uh, 
don't know. Craig Gordon always just seems to do his job. Do you know what I mean? He's, and it's another clean sheet for him. I think what Rory just touched on there, you know, going through the list of names, has to just have a good team. I don't think there's any outstanding players. And but as I said last week in the show, it, it pains me every time that Liam Boyce scores because Rory backed him for top scorer. <laughs> and then when I see my back and a Kevin Nisbet, I'm being absolutely hopeless. Um, it pains me a wee bit. But Boyce stands out because... It was a seemed, penalty, to be fair. It was a penalty. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It, still, it still counts in the goal charts, unfortunately. Um, so, I, as I say, they've got a good balance right across the pitch. Um, so... And I do, I do like the boy Michael Smith. We that we can chat um, midweek on the WhatsApp about him. Um, I like him as well. So what a finish! Going well. oh, sorry, what a finish! I ah, great finish. It, it was like Tony Ralston's finish against. Him. Anyway, um, so I, I think I do think in the future there'll, there'll be a, a big blip for Hearts. I I don't think they'll be able to sustain it. You know, not that they're going to not finish in with the top six. I think they'll finish top six, but. I think they'll go through a, a rough spell. And it's interesting what Rory said. <laughs> you know, a couple of defeats in the Aaron Nielsen's case. You know, they, they, they're, they're, they're heavily critical. They were heavily critical of them you know, towards the end of the season last year. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. But again, it just it just exposes Martindale again that he can get his team up for four games a season. And every other week, they're absolutely garbage. So good luck to him in the championship next year. <laughs> Uh, see what I was going to say Hart's got the third best squad in the, the league would you say a second maybe second I been the problem in there Habs how in depth the squad is I mean I think they've got a good you know a, 11, 12, 13 possibly but I was looking at there and they're, they're bringing that is it I'm going to go for this pronunciation Nonnelly something they're bringing yeah. him off the bench Halliday Mackay Steven uh, Peter uh, Haring or Haring, Jamie Aye. Walker in the bench. I mean, these are players that aren't even in their 11, so I, I, I think they've got a pretty strong squad. And I, I, I would say if they don't finish third, third fourth, it'll be a, a... I think you can always tell as well where players' reactions, you know, even winning the penalty, I think it was bringing me, like, that, that, that kind of camaraderie, the cheering, you know, high five. it looks like there's a real buzz about the squad. You know, they're all... They, they look... Tight knit and close. And it comes with winning, though. It comes with winning, winning games. Winning games is all what it's about, you know. If they were losing most weeks, they wouldn't be high fiving each other with each other's throats and knifing each other in the back. That's what most dressing rooms do. I and I've got great experience of that. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a common denominator there, Wilson. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, let's move on to far part. Model were fourth after a two-one-one. Slattery gave it a model with an early league. Ross, Ross County bounced back really well through Charles Cook. Tony Watt with his fifth goal of the season gave model the three points. Wilson, model dug it out, but was the result fair? I don't know. I, I just sometimes think, now I know he's, you know, he's, he's issues in his career, but see when, see when a team, you know, like Mother will have a number nine that's going to, you know, score goals, then that, that just keeps your head off you. Ross County's living since I don't think any of these other teams have. I'm not saying Tony Watts a proven goal scorer I and mean, he's done well this season, but I always think that's just what keeps you slightly ahead. If you have that, you know, person that can play that's maybe going to bag you a, a late goal as such. Again, I have real fears for Ross County as well. I don't think they have that. They yeah, really well. A couple of good players, um, Spittle and the guy Charles Cook, is it? Um, but as I say, I, I again. I didn't see the full 90 minutes, but going by the highlights, Ross County may feel a draw was a fair result, but just shows you one kind of big, bigger name signing um, can, can get you these important three points. And Mother will have put a wee run together. Um, but again, winning your home games against lower teams at Fur Park is probably expected, I would imagine, um, for the players and the money that Graham Alexander's used. So fair, fair, fair play, fair play. And I was wrong. I mean, I thought Mother would really struggle this year, but I was just probably listening to Rory. Because um, he said it as well. Um, so I'll change my tune and say, well done, Graham Alexander. <laughs> Rory, have you been pleasantly surprised with how well Motherwell started? Uh, I, I mean, again, I'll go back to, I think, winning big games and, you know, against, or get going to Ibrox and getting a result is fine for Motherwell. But if you're not backing that up with results against Ross County at home, etc., then it's great to have these days against the old firm and it's great to, to have big results. But, 
what I will say is that result sets up a, a pretty big weekend next weekend. You've got Rangers playing Hibs and uh, Hearts playing Hearts playing Motherwell. So the top four all in action against each other. Mm-hmm. So it could go a long way to deciding. Good luck, Hibs. <laughs> um, but I so listen. Motherwell have been been on fire and um, they, they've backed it up there. And Shankar spoke about winning ugly and no winning winning when you're not playing well. And if Motherwell can, can keep that up on top of picking up points when they are playing particularly well, then I, I think Van Veen and Watt, the, that partnership is working. They complement each other really well. I think Tony Watt doesn't get enough credit for his actual footballing ability, his football yeah. brain. I'm impressed with how he plays. And Van Veen is almost the muscle. You know, he's good in the air, um, can win headers, hold the ball up. And they've, they've got midfielders to, to get in touch with them and, and, and contribute goal-wise. It was a cracking goal. The boys scored the, the first goal of the game. So... I I really do think Motherwell could could they will, I mean they'll be absolutely fine in terms of you know the bottom end of the table which they've fluttered with a couple of times over the last couple of years so they certainly won't be down that end of the table but whether they can make top six or not might be a little bit of a stretch it'll probably come down to I mean the way Aberdeen are going it'll probably come down to them and Dundee United the way it's sitting at the moment. Shankers, what was your thoughts on Motherwell's two one one over Ross County? Backing up what they are saying, I think that's. At home to teams that are, are in the, the lower end of the the lower end of the table, so it is a pretty kind of a routine result. One thing, see, see Tony Watt, do you think he could possibly find himself as that maybe third or fourth uh, striker on the, the Scotland squad? If see we we Nisbet and Shankland and, and Griffiths and stuff like that, do you think Tony Watt could? I've seen uh, Graham Alexander saying that if he if he kind of keeps his form up, he'll be. He'll be looking to get, get back in the squad. I, I don't think so, personally, but just when Graham Alexander was saying that, I just thought I would put it out there and see what you're saying. Because if he keeps up performances and that's Scotland, I mean, he wouldn't hardly play, but they're always taking a, a Nisbet or a third or fourth choice striker. And Tony Watt, well, Tony Watt, you know, 27, 28. I think it's far of that. Eh? I, I mean, again, basing on, you know, what Steve Clark did initially when he came in and had Shanklin, Nisbet, Brophy, etc., winning caps, then you could possibly argue why not, you know, if he scores double figures, etc. But I think Tony Watt just now just be comfortable being at a settled team, playing week Aye. in, week out, and have that kind of, you know, whatever, you know, white elephant in the room about his goal against Barcelona, you know, <laughs> um, hanging hanging around his neck as such. Um, I, I would think, you know, a good season at Motherwell before he even probably thinks about you know, international football. Uh, see, this is probably the most settled he's been in his career as well, so that's obviously mm. helped him a lot. Yeah. And, and uh, I've seen him, he posted some about it, it kind of feels like home and that now, Motherwell, because he's been there for a while. And that's obviously benefit him, benefit him uh, on the park because his performances, the fact that he's settled in a team now, he's, he's a kind of probably their main player and stuff like that. So he's definitely getting the, the benefits of that uh, in his performances as well. We'll move into today. There was three games that took place today. We'll start with the game at uh, the new St Mirren Park. St Mirren 3, Aberdeen 2. St Mirren came from 2-1 down to get three points after obviously a red card to Terry Jenks. Rory, massive win for St Mirren, but Aberdeen, you've spoken about this for a few weeks. You're beginning to you're beginning to have a good point. I think Stephen Glass could be in a bit of soapy bubble. Potentially. Um, as Wilson touches on there with my multiple prediction, I'm not very good at them. I... Did not think there would be a lot of goals in that game, um, and how wrong <laughs> how wrong was I? Um, I didn't certainly did not see a three three two thriller uh, with a red card and all action, but I, I mean he summed it up well. St Martin, you can see the relief in Jim Goodwin's face, and it was the same with David Martindale last week. It doesn't matter who you're beating; it's always nice to beat yeah, an Aberdeen or a Rangers or a Celtic. But I think when you've no one off season to beat anybody, it's just that relief on his face, and you know the polar opposite in the other dugout. Um, Stephen Glass looked chalk white. He seems to have aged. I watched his interview after it. He, you know, he, he was a little bit, you know, he was a little bit frustrated at some of the questions he was being asked last week, and maybe showing a little bit of inexperience with some of his responses and things. I just felt like Aberdeen, even when they went two one up, looked susceptible at the back. They did not look like they believed they were going to win that game, and some man fed off it. I think when they got that equaliser, not too long after the red card. I think there was only one team that were really going to go on and win it. Since Stephen um, Glass has been the manager, they've played 20 games. I'll give you a stab at how many clean sheets they've kept, Rory. You, you're asking me, in yeah. my opinion, how many? 
no, I, I, how many do you, how many clean seats do you think they've kept? Stephen Class was a manager. They've how many games, games is it? Twenty games. Uh, one. One. I mean, start. Chris <laughs> Champ in Shankers. Chris Champ. <laughs> <laughs> stats. Um, I mean, you can you can spin stats. Uh, that's not a great stat, of course. It's not, but you you probably you can spin stats to, to suit a particular uh, argument or way of thinking. So you know, listen. I know it's no ideal one clean sheet, but and I am an advocate of giving people time. I think this idea that managers get three four months is just ridiculous. Stephen Glass should be there, in my opinion, till the end of the season. Um, you know, unless. Obviously, crisis point where you know they're going to be down the bottom end of the table, struggling. That's slightly different, but I, I do believe that he should be given time, and he should be given uh, whether he will be or not will be yet to be seen. But you know, into January at the very, very, very least. Um, but I, uh, it's, it's certainly not looking great because they do have a good squad. Um, but it's just it's just trying to get it right. I, I do think I go back to that Ray Rovers game when they get knocked out of the League Cup. All mm-hmm. those changes. I just didn't I, see the reason for it, and it's snowballed. I don't think they've won since then, and it's just it's just kind of snowballed from there. And they're finding it really, really difficult at the moment, Aberdeen. And I, I hope it does come good because he's a young coach who's, who's come over here, and you know people have already before he's even walked through the door. Oh, it's a power job and all the rest of it, which you know puts extra pressure on him. So maybe maybe he can get it right and, and turn it round, but certainly. Certainly doesn't look that way at the moment, but I was pleased when all clubs at Mung getting their first one of the season. I must say, Shankers, what was your thoughts in the, the game? It was a good game to watch. I thought it was can I, I it was. There was some terrific goals. Ramirez's goal was a great goal. See, I always get the the hang. See when you see like Aberdeen St Mung on Sky, you're, you're a wee bit like, I'm, don't know if I'm going to watch that one, but I'm actually I'm actually pretty glad I did. I, I was the same as as you. I, I never seen a a three two game. I thought it would. If either side was going to win it, it would be, it would be maybe be like a one 0 or something like that. But to, to just going back to Rory's point about um, the crisis, I, I'm not saying Aberdeen in a crisis, but see the new like the way they are, like Aberdeen should be finishing third. The uh, for me, like the club club like Aberdeen, they've done it, uh, done it year after year. So what, when does it get to the point? What what is the point of crisis like bottom two? Kind of thing, or can just be all the all the see when you're saying about got and it'll need to be a crisis for them to to get sacked like before the the end of the season kind of type thing. But I'm just thinking, can what what does it get? What does it? How long does it go like this for before? No six games. Like, no, no, six no games. I know, I know six games. I know, but I'm saying maybe it gets to Christmas and and things on the better. I mean, Aberdeen fans will will be, will be demanding a, a change. I would imagine if they're still in a similar situation. From Christmas, I don't think. I know. I totally get the point. I mean, in six months, how can he? How can he get a chance to implement uh, what he's what he did at the club and all that? I mean, you, you need time. But I've been fans that are used to finishing third and qualifying for Europe and challenging cup semi-finals and stuff like that. But so. the, 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 the fans almost spoke out and said, "We now don't want. We don't want that." Because Derek McInnes must be sitting thinking the same. But yeah. Aberdeen as a club took an approach. That they want, they didn't want to finish third and fourth playing a particular style of football. They wanted to try and, and get to the point where they can finish third and fourth, or maybe try and split the old firm, or try and make a push even further by playing a different style of football. And I think they knew they were going to, need to take a hit for a period of time because Derek McInnes's consistency in finishing third and second at times was phenomenal. Um, I don't think anyone can can doubt that he was unbelievable for Aberdeen. I just think Aberdeen as a club have took a step back and went right. We're going to sacrifice those finishes for the time being. Let you know, let Derek McInnes go and bring in what we feel is somebody who can transform the way the club play football and their philosophies and the way they think. And that doesn't happen overnight. And that's no me saying that that's the right or wrong thing to do. It's just what I think Aberdeen have done. Well, and say, and I, and I was going to touch on that point. <clears throat> can the Aberdeen fans and the board as such? Because because when I watched a bit of the game today, they, they looked really poor. They, they didn't look to have any sort of game plan. There was individual mistakes. The two centre halves were terrible. But the fans can maybe see right the performances have been okay. You know it might be a kind of work in progress. A bit that we'll probably touch on with Ange Ball and Celtic. If the fans can see that that progress is there and they're playing well, they're maybe just not executing chances, etc. Then they'll you'll get more time. 
But I'm looking at the performances, and the performances aren't good enough either. I don't see any sort of development. Now, unfortunately, Stephen Glass is going to be compared to his predecessor in Derek McInnes, and I highly regard Derek McInnes as a manager for what he did at Aberdeen. And I, I, I think he'll be, if it keeps going the way he is, I think Christmas he'll be, he'll, he'll be lucky because the performances aren't there. They're not creating chances. Um, I know they scored two today, but they, they didn't look as if they were going to win that game today. I, I think they looked a bag of nerves. And um, the poor boy Bates had, oh my goodness. And Joe Lewis, you know, who I think has been a really good goalie for Aberdeen, looked really, really poor as well. And he, he's been poor a couple of times at, um, against him. I forget the name of their stadium. I was going to call it Love Street there. He, Love he, Street. he spilled one a couple of years ago in there. And, um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I think there could be a, a kind of knee-jerk reaction um, for Stephen Glass if things keep going this downward spiral because I, I don't see any sort yeah they've signed some good players but there doesn't seem to be any sort of progression there and then my good friend Callum Davis could he be a shout for the Aberdeen job? Quite possibly I yeah. mean do you know how though he might get I, I said last week that because he was kind of as we say an in-house appointment he obviously came for the kind of partnership club will that buy him more time because they they kind of see it as a project and it's well, that, that's that, that that's the whole argument, Scott. You know, you're look, you're looking, but if performances first of all don't improve and the results are still bad, then you know, again, we'll be the same as we when we speak about Celtic. How long are the punters going to give them? Because that's that's who in effect is going to decide. Because if their attendances drop and there's banners and pickets, etc., then the board have only got one option, unfortunately. We'll just interrupt. USA have won the Ryder Cup. It is official. They are the the winners of the Ryder Cup. We will move on to the Habs and Johnson games. Habs won one 0 Martin Boyle penalty penalty was enough to send them second in the league. Shankers another good result for Habs. It was a probably a change in the red card, but Habs got the job done and they're sitting second. They can't ask for any more, can they? Aye, that's it. It was St Johnson's a a tough game uh, for them, so I think it's pretty similar to what I was saying with, with Rangers earlier. There will be no be again how it how it was done. There'll just be three points and. Obviously, it's a bonus that they've got a, a clean sheet as well. But Hibs, Hibs going along uh, nicely. Boyles, uh, I think he's top, is he top scorer in the league now? I think he Possibly. is. I think him and Fura uh, Hashi maybe equal. Boise must be close. I think Boise. <laughs> Boise. <laughs> Boise. Uh, what do you call it? You put me off my, my thought there. Uh, Hibs, <laughs> Hibs are uh, I've gone along well, you know, and because of the way Hearts are and, and maybe... Celtic kind of poor form and Rangers on uh, Rangers no playing uh, particularly well and Hibs are they've got all the attention Hibs are kind of gone along pretty quietly uh, not really getting noticed enough a, a lot and, and picking up results and that'll put them into a tee uh, I think it helps when they're, they're bringing the likes of Scott Allen and stuff like that back into the team I think it helps a lot with the likes of Boyle and, and Nisbet and stuff like that they forward in they pick somebody like him behind them uh, picking passes for them is it's perfect. So uh, Hibs are going along nicely, and it's going to be a a real good game uh, next week uh, against Rangers. Yeah, definitely. Rory, what was your thoughts on Hibs one now one over St Johnson? Um, tough midweek trip to Dundee in the cup, comfortably through in that one. I think just getting the job done on the Sunday is the most important thing. I I think given the amount of fixtures Hibs have had and the positive start they've had to go and continue that against a stuffy team who know how to win games of football, although that sounds a ridiculous statement, given that they've only won a couple this season. I just think, I watched them at Dens during the week and, you know, they went, they won 2-0, probably one of the better team from the large majority of it, but like I said, they, they always seem to grind out results. So I think Hibs would have just been, you know, turn up, win the game, up the road, another three points, and they would have taken the scrappiest of games just to win, I think. Uh, these clubs aren't necessarily used to having this backlog of fixtures at the start of the season, so Johnson Hibbs, you know, in these European games, and I think that was that told for St Johnson at the start of the season, um, with the results domestically as well, so I, a good one now one for Hibbs doesn't sound like it was one for the, uh, it doesn't sound like it was a classic or one for the record books, but it's job done, it's three points, and a fantastic start to the season in the League Cup semi-finals, and another three points on the board this week. We'll move on to the final game of the weekend. Celtic won, Dundee United won. Leela Bada gave Celtic lead before Hearts equalised and that was it. It was 1-1. Celtic <coughs> didn't really create created plenty of chances, just didn't really get that match one in goal. Wilson, Celtic start, three wins from seven games, ten points. What's your thoughts? Is it time to panic or is it still early days? 
I think the expectation levels at Celtic suggest that it's a panic, to be honest. I know the manager doesn't seem to feel it's a panic, but again, I wonder if he's maybe not fully au fait with what, what, what's expected. Um, but again, and it was it was good friend of the show, Aaron Connolly. I saw his tweet earlier on, you know, about, you know, Celtic went, what was it, four months without a manager, but we're letting some guy wear a suit, you know, sign players. So I, I don't know what, what Celtic fans expect, you know, and I've touched on this probably every week in the show since Posta Coglu was appointed. I just don't know how much time they, they, they're going to give this guy. Because if, if you're to look, if, if they're to perform, you know, or get the points the same way, by Christmas they could be, you know, 15, 20 points behind and sitting, you know, fourth or fifth because the two Edinburgh teams are flying. Um, and as I say, regardless of Rangers' performances, they're, they're getting results. Um, most of the time, um, and I just don't see, you know, if this if this is a trajectory going forward, how long they can they, they can go on like this? Because I can't see for a minute at the moment Celtic won a trophy this season. I know they're through to the semi finals, but that would be the minimum requirement uh, for that. Yes, you can look at the injury list, but again, that happens to to most teams over over the course of a season, and. I'm start. I'm starting to think. You know, I mean, he, he comes across great. I think he's a really good listen. He's obviously got his ideas, and it's a wee bit, you know, as we mentioned, <laughs> Stephen Glass as well. I just don't know if Scottish football is the place where you're going to get that time. There's more chance of Stephen Glass getting the time than it would be, you know, at Celtic Rangers. Now you could argue again. This going back to the point I tried to make earlier about Gerard when Gerard came in. You could see the progression. You know, now I know it is only seven, ten plus the European game, seven to ten games, whatever it is. But under Gerard, Rangers fans, I believe, could see the progression, see what they kind of was trying to do. This this Celtic, and I think it's a lot to do with the personnel, to be fair as well. They, they, they look, they created a few chances today. I know they had the bar three times or whatever it was, but they surely can't be relying on Kyogo just to be the, the kind of main threat. You know, and as I say, most games this season, I mean, you, you gave the stat on um, Aberdeen. It'd be interesting to see how many clean sheets Joe Hart's kept. You know, and Joe Hart's a fantastic goalkeeper, but with that defence in front of him, I mean, Celtic fans' thoughts on this, but in my opinion, I'm actually quite worried in terms of if Postacoglu continues with this average run, let's call it average because they're mid-table, are they going to go and look at possibly Steve Clark to come in, you know, midway through, you know, like December, January, and take him away from the Scotland job to try and steady the ship? Because I think that's that's what's needed. But how much would that set them back, though? Like, well, again, but if you can't see, I mean, again, they're going on about Ange Ball and the way we play, and Ajeti missed a couple of chances today. You'd expect him to score. He looks really Mr. Mobile. He uh, missed an absolute. Uh, he, he missed the sitter, but he was getting a wee bit of criticism for the header from Ralston's cross. And in the, the commentator said, "Oh, a wee bit much fizz or whatever it was in that cross." And then Dundee United scored an identical goal a minute later. <laughs> you know, a fizzed in cross and a header into the corner. So I would count that as a miss as well. I know, I know they hit the woodwork. And if Celtic fans can see some sort of progression, then, yeah, you may get a bit longer. But, again, I still think he needs at least eight new players in because McCarthy looked horrendous again today. Then that's fact years, saw is that, like... I did, well, there was obviously that. leaks in the paper, you yeah. know, this week that he's struggling with the intensity of the training, etc. Now, that could possibly be from long-term injuries, but... Surely this stuff should have been tried and tested before offering the guy a four-year deal. But that's what I mean, like, as well. It looks as if McCarthy just doesn't suit the style of play because it's the ball, obviously, we know, Starfelt usually brings the ball out. It goes to McCarthy. McCarthy isn't the ball carrier to go and play it forward. Every pass I was seeing him, he was passing it backwards. He was passing it sideways. Yeah, that doesn't that, 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 that's, kind of, that's the kind of modern day, you know, football. There's always one guy in the team that's going to I mean, Neil Lennon did that for years, but... But McGregor was in there and was doing that. Was getting the ball forward, you could see. Yeah, I know it was. Well, I mean, Carl McGregor's a big loss, but let's Aye. let's not be blaming every team doesn't get injuries and suspensions over the season. But I just, there's, I think Celtic still need eight players. I still think. I mean, you look at the bench today, and I'm looking at that bench and saying, if that was a Stuart bench, I would just go with a starting eleven <laughs> for ninety minutes and not bring any of them on. You know that that that's how poor it is. 
And for a club and a budget the size of Celtics, it's it's unacceptable. And I, I'm not necessarily blaming the manager. I'm blame, I'm blaming the club, looking and saying, this this guy's to you know build a team that can possibly possibly get to the Champions League, and they'll no get they'll no give them the tools. Wilson, do you think do you, how do you rate Postecoglou's signings? If you were without going through them all in detail, but do you think that most of his signings have been pretty good? I will. Abada looks decent when he plays. Um, Kyogo looked good when he played. I think. I just think Joe Hart's good anyway. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's in the least same league as Alan McGregor has been. But I think he's a, a good goalkeeper. McCarthy not impressed. Jota looks nice and tidy against. You know, see how he played against uh, Betis. He looked good, nice to European games. He looked nice and tidy against. You know, no disrespect for Ross County's fullbacks or whatever, but. Can you can you see can you see him ripping Calvin Bassey or Barisic to bits? I can't, um, and that's where they're going to be. They're judged on old firm games. Now I think Posta Colgo needs an old firm victory, whenever it is, to get a wee bit of pressure off him. Because as I say, if the trajectory of the results keep going the way they are, I, I really fear unless he has a big January. But um, so I was I would say signings. Going back to the question, okay, but not not what you would expect from a club the size of Celtic. No way. Rory, what's your thoughts on Celtic at the moment? Do you think there is cause for concern or is it still early days to judge how this team are performing? There's cause for concern, of course there is. You don't use, you don't, uh, you know, three away defeats on the bounce, I think it's cause for concern for probably any team, um, followed by, you know, a, a draw at home. But it's not, for me, it's not cause for concern and who's in charge and, you know, the, the direction the club's moving. And I think it's cause for concern because they're dropping too many points. And I think it would be even worse and it would be magnified even more if Rangers had won at Tannadice and had won at Ibrox against Motherwell, it would have been 10 times worse. However, I do think the manager needs uh, Celtic, and I, I kind of touched on this when he first got the job, I don't think he realises what, realizes what he's walking into, and Wilson was saying it just off, off, off air before the show started, you know, I don't think he realises when he's with some of his comments just where he is and who he's managing and, and how difficult it is and how much of a goldfish bowl it is, because you know, playing well or making valid points, which makes sense and logical. They only get you so far if you're not picking up results. <coughs> um, but I, I kind of think, I agree with a lot of what Wilson said. And the reason I asked him about the signs is because I think that a lot of his signs have actually been pretty good. You know, Joe Hart has been, you know, he's made some cracking saves. He's conceded a couple of goals where he's made errors. But generally speaking, I think he's been pretty good. You know, Starfelt, the jury's still out. He's looked tidy in places, but he's also conceded goals, except that. Um, Juranovic, I think, has done fine. Um, Jota looks decent. Furuhashi, I think, as well. It's one of those ones where I think if Celtic were on top of the league, everyone would say he's a world beater, but because they're not doing so well, ah, he's been all right. He's been better than all right. He's got about seven and eight games or something like that. Um, and, he, and he's been very I, good. I, I, didn't, I didn't say he wasn't all right. What I was saying was I'm, I'm worried that Celtic... Are putting that he's your only threat. Yeah, that, that, that's much. my concern. Now, again, when Celtic went through the phase of Henrik Larson and how good Henrik Larson was, Chris Sutton and John Hartson were all still chipping in with goals, you know. Whereas I'm look I'm looking at you know Furahashi and I'm thinking, where else are Celtic's goals going to come from? Like, is is Callum McGregor going to score 10 goals for Celtic this season? Is Turnbull going to score 10 to 15 goals that he's expected to do? I I don't know, and it certainly doesn't look that way. I, yeah, I just think his signings have been has been decent. You know, they, they're a bad on the other side as well. I don't think there's been anyone he's signed who hasn't been hasn't been relatively successful. And James McCarthy, I've not seen much of him or whatever else. Starfelt, oh. Starfelt. Ah, you, I mean, you, you could, I think in general play, Starfelt looks decent. But um, can I just say as well, I thought it was a red card on McCarthy. I thought the boy Fuchs should have been sent off at nil nil. Um, I thought that was a terrible tackle. I thought um, both sides had bad refereeing decision against him. I thought that was a red card, but I think the DNA just read a penalty as well from right. See that I get that and, and I know they'll say oh, he won't Celtic. I, I don't think that's a penalty. However, Dundee, I think it was Dundee um it was one of the games in the telly. I think maybe against Hibs, the Hibs player kind of shoulder charges the Dundee boy and, and they get the penalty. So if the rule is it's a penalty, then it's a penalty, but I just think that on, I was listening to it on the radio. To be fair, um, 
And Richard Gordon and even Pat Bonner were going on about this Stonewall penalty and absolute disgrace and Clancy this and Clancy that, albeit Rory's colleague Richard Gordon was in a bit of a bad mood after the Aberdeen result. He was furious today. <laughs> I'm looking at it going, I don't think that's a penalty. That's just shoulder to shoulder. I, just, uh, I think I, I've seen them given in other games. And well, that, 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 that's, that's, and that, that, that's the issue because I'm sure it was Dundee Dens Park get one given and you're looking and the referees give the... And you're going, why, that's a shoulder charge. That's no like a foul. Albeit, you know, if that's the rule, then it's a penalty. But I just didn't you look... The, the, rules, the, the rules change in a time, though, as well. Like, you can't keep up with us. the rule changes every... When it yeah. comes to referees. Like, that's the thing. Shankers, what's your thoughts on Celtic and the, the game as a whole? Good point for the day United as well, we've got to say. I did. I mean, if you go to a Parkhead or, or Ibrox, I mean, any, any of the kind of... The top four sides, even Pataudry, Tenkars, if you go there and, and get a point, it's, it's a decent result for teams like Dundee United. So, quite a surprise when Marcel took one now. I thought it was, uh, we're just going to go in and, and, and win the game uh, more convincing. But uh, it's almost a, a cause for concern. The, the format at the moment, uh, three wins out of six or seven, was it you said? Uh, three wins from seven, ten points from seven. It uh, doesn't, doesn't make good reading, and, and it's similar to what we were saying about Aberdeen. When, when does it get to the stage where you, you do need to change something? Like, are, are they willing to almost give up this year just to close? Uh, Ange can get the way that, that he's willing to play and, and his own players. I know he's signed uh, 10 or 11 players, but I actually still think he, he did have five or, or six players when you were looking at the, the squad. You're needing, you're, a goal, at the, you're needing a goal in the, at home and you see that bench. You're, you're no, know, uh, you're no jumping for like, Just sorry. on what Shanker says there as well, what, Joe Hart, three-year deal, James McCarthy, four-year deal, Jack Amatis, five-year deal. Postacoglu, 12-month deal. Doesn't really... Aye, that's... Really really enough, does it? That's it. See, when I seen the 12-month rolling contract, I was like, oh, they're to, off to a be fair, Ma- Ma- Martin O'Neill was in a 12-month rolling contract. That's just to be Celtic do it. That's, Martin O'Neill was in 12-month rolling contract. I go, ba- I go back to this... I go back to this when Eddie Howe wouldn't have been. No, Eddie Howe wouldn't have been, no. Absolutely not. And that's what I'm getting at as well. And where's, where's he now? But there's the thing. But Eddie Howe linked with Palace and Newcastle and Eddie Howe this, Eddie Howe that. Dud. <laughs> no, I'm not saying where he is now. The point, I'm ma- the point I'm the point I'm the point I'm making is it shows you they don't have the faith in Poster Coglu that they would have had in how that's all I'm if saying. If they had faith in Poster Coglu, they would have, have, have given him a, a coaching, allowed him to pick his own coaching staff. Well, I, I agree, I definitely agree with that point. And I, and then it says he's brought in his own sports scientist, his own staff, and it's a guy from Morton. How well no, does he, he know him? He hasn't brought in a single person. No, he's brought in Anton McElhone from Morton as the head of sports science, the guy that was a caretaker at Morton. He's brought him in. Do you think and they're saying that's his first ever his backroom team. And I'm going, there is absolutely no way he knows him. No. <laughs> absolute <laughs> shambles. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All the, all the way from Yokohama Marinos to know that Anton McElhone's the caretaker manager at Morton. Get a grip. And what, what I know, it doesn't annoy me. It's just it, what I love about all <laughs> this. like it does. <laughs> how, right how right was Dave King? Now that man was vilified and mocked. How right about, he was for the house of cards. All right, right. Because that that is exactly what that is, and that's where that's where I feel. What did he say? We said that the like, house of cards. One one bad season, and that's it. Faulty bits. And as I say, I don't. That's think... mismanagement for a higher level. Though. That's well, not. Course, that's that's what I'm saying. But he said the whole club. He said, he said the whole club. And I don't get how. These guys, in effect, get get away with it as such. You know, and I'm looking at Celtic, and I don't know many Celtic fans that will be thinking, oh, we might win two cups or we'll win silverware. Uh, the Celtic fans are quite happy to accept this full season as a write-off. Uh, that's, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Are they willing to, to give up on this year? Obviously, they, they still want to win the league and, and win cups, of course, today. But the way it, it's gone... For the for the way that they're wanting to play and stuff like that, but are they willing to sacrifice nothing? Sacrifice like no winning anything or or that? Just I, they're, get... they're in a semi final cup. They're, they're drawing some Aye, but I know. think I think the most Aye, realistic the, the establishment will take care of that. Really, don't you? I think though the, the, I think the most realistic Celtic fans will have set will think to themselves: We knew this would be a transitional season. We knew it would take a year or so to get this right. So I. 
are they going to wait that long? But as you say, if they don't get results, if they're six points behind already, with Rangers not playing well, it does become a sugarly peg. And it's not probably not Postacoglu's fault. It's just the way the hands he's been dealt. I, I just... I, but, are Emmy feel sorry for him the, the way I think he's been handed, uh, he's been shafted in a way because the 12 months we go back to the 12 month rolling contract, players getting signed when he's not even in charge, players getting long contracts that probably he wasn't even, uh, but even, even when he was there, it looks as if some of the signings weren't there. One has I, think you can only, I think you can only make that argument for so long before you go, though. That, well, the guy knew the script before he came in. If you know, if you want to feel that sorry for him, any manager would have had to deal with that. So he, he knew the script and he accepted the job on that basis. So he didn't, Eddie want... Howe, didn't he, obviously? But I keep, <laughs> going back, I keep going back to Wilson's comment when Poster Coggle was announced about what he called Kennedy and Strachan. What have they done to deserve a place in that coaching staff? They were part of the problem last season. Aye, but they were also part of Brendan Rodgers' success. So you, you can't you can't point out every defeat Celtic have had and go right. John Kennedy and Gavin Strachan. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is it's a it's a it's a whole it's a club problem. I, 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 I think any team. manager has to come in and have his and own. Have his own team. Team. I don't disagree with that, I but I, I just I'm, not, think... I'm I'm not necessarily blaming Kennedy and Strachan. I just always feel like unless you're promoting from a thin like Smith when he walked under Graham Souness, etc., moving up the ladder type thing. I just always feel like if the manager left, then the assistant the coaches that he's brought in, etc., should be thinking, well, you know, I need to take my pay off and, and go. I, I I just don't get how they can phone up. Now, I'm not saying he was a massive success, but do, do you think, right, I mean, let's just put this out there. If Liverpool phones Steven Gerrard, right, and says, we'd like you to be the new manager because Klopp's leaving, right, but you have to take that whole backroom team at Liverpool, would he go? And leave yeah, Gary McAllister, that, Michael Beal, etc. But would they get the chance? But that's fine. Would they get the chance again? That's maybe the say the thing post the call it was well. Would they get the chance of the job again? Well, that, that's why I'm a massive job for And that. I'm not just saying it because it's because it, I'm just I'm wondering about these kind of elite level managers. You know, are they turning around and saying? I mean, look at I was I was looking at the Arsenal Spurs game. They look at Arteta's backroom team. Some of the best coaches in the world. Yeah. They're still honking. It's all but about he, it's all about it's all about leverage as well, though. It's same as you're a player. If, you know, if you've got if if you're wanted by a club and you know you're doing well, then you've got more leverage to go and get what you want. And Ange Postacoglu probably didn't have much leverage well, whatsoever. That's a good point. So you know he's gone into those negotiations almost gone. His mindset is probably like, don't mess this I'm up. The Celtic job, see you later, lads. Aye, this is an unbelievable <laughs> opportunity. Whereas Eddie Howe's approaching it, going, I want this, I want this, I want that, I want that, and I want that. So it's all about leverage and what you can get with you, but. I, I'm an advocate of Postacoglu. I don't think it's been a great start. Of course it hasn't. I think if you go through his signings one by one, you'll you'll find he's got more right, in my opinion. I know it's a small sample size. He's got more right at this stage in the season than he's probably got wrong. I think stick with it. I think he needs to be a lot more pragmatic to try and get results. So he's far, he, you know, he, he's got this he's great open. idea, but I don't think it's going to work over the course of your season in this particular league that he's going to be enough he's going to pick up enough results to win the league if he continues to go the way he's going it looks great on the odd day when they go and win 6-0 um, but on those days where it's no maybe going his way I, I think he needs to be a little bit more pragmatic to try and pick up results but I absolutely think they should be sticking with him and I, like I said I, I don't think that any any manager could, could, could turn that round overnight and he maybe with those two 6-0 wins in a row you know kind of a, um, architect of his own downfall and it would almost became a little bit of a like oh here we go um, so listen, I, I would I would absolutely stick with him I would give him another transfer window I would give him the summer next year and I would and I would go with it and I would see you know where they're sitting then because I I, 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 I 100% agree with you I just don't know if the majority of the Celtic support will go on a, for a full trophy of the season again you know, I, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't see any reason why they won't be sitting in the final. Johnson are a good side, and you know, I know they've won the last two cups, but you know, anybody's back in Celtic in that fixture. They get through that game; they're in the final. So I don't see where this comes from that they're not going to win a cup. I'm not definitely not going to win it, but I'm just saying if like, what's I I know, you know, the majority of Celtic fans would rather lose to St Johnson than get to the final and lose to Rangers. I, 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 I think know? based on so, the first old form of the season. You can't say that Rangers are going to definitely beat Celtic, given Rangers' no. form either. Well, no, you de definitely can't I say this. Heavy, 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 I, I think January is going to be favorites. massive for them. 
absolutely massive. And I think if you offered him being six points behind in January, he'd be delighted. Yeah. He needs to stay in touch, definitely agree with that. Yeah, definitely. But we'll move on to the Championship. A couple of, we'll go through the scores quickly. I brought now, Kilmarnock now, Ayrn now, Morton now, Dunfermline now, Hamilton now, Inverness 2, Queen of the South 1, and Ray 3, Partick 2. Wilson, I'll come to you. Obviously, I brought Kilmarnock was a now now. What was your takeaway for your for the result of the weekend of the Championship? Uh, I think uh, less said about the Kilmarnock <laughs> I brought game on Friday night, probably the better. I fell asleep I think- watching it. I, I I think eleven players in blue and white did as well. To be honest, <laughs> um, I it was it was really really poor standard. Um, I actually thought the first half our kind of, um were the better team. Um, Kelly came out a wee bit in the second half, but I, I think the less said about the game, the better. Um, the result worried, of the, that, worried about Inverness? No, mm. they, they'll blow up. <laughs> they'll, they'll absolutely blow up. And, and Inverness don't have a good player in their squad. They'll blow up. Um, I I I think well, I think there is always I'm going to clip this. I'll tell you what, I'll say it every week that Inverness will blow up and we'll win our week. There you go. Um, I think that, I think the result is I'm just going to pick Wraith Rovers because it was obviously five goal thriller um, today in beating Partick. But again, and as much as I don't like to praise him, it's another point in the board for Jim Duffy here. You know, is that him undefeated since he, he yeah, got the game? Three, three, uh, two wins in a draw for three a games. Draw, yeah. So he, he can't complain too much about that. But just because it was five goals, I'll go Ray Throvers. Rory, what was your result of the championship? The game you were doesn't at, leave, maybe? This doesn't leave much picking, does it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, 3 0 nils. Nicky Lowe looked like, a, looked, looked like he got a bad injury, so I hope, he, hope he's all right. Yeah, he's definitely. Been right. Fantastic for our growth this season along with Nubly so hopefully he's alright uh, and I don't think it was a bad point for Kamarnik I didn't see the game but I don't think it would be a bad point it's, you know, a lot a lot of teams will struggle up there between now and January I think um, so I think Kamarnik take the point and move on but ugh, the, the only other result you can look at really is, is the Inverness one you know being pegged back and still managing to get the win but the amount of nil-nils in that league it, it doesn't make for much picking in terms of results you know Wilson picks that game and then <laughs> aye. so true. I'll go I'll go, I'll go. with Inverness and all the best Shankers Shankles, when you go, give us a result out the one, the out the three and a half Aye, I just think in Inverness keep my man. I'm going uh, to. I picked that go. one. You need to pick a nil nil, mate. <laughs> it's got to be Shankles. It's got to be here. Wouldn't they actually pick them for anything? <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, see, um, the Wraith game. I, did, I never noticed. But see, because I'm looking at the the scores. And was the tables not just known because it wasn't there on Saturday? So that, was that when was that the day? Today, like, cause, uh, day. cause Wraith were playing the Thursday night. <laughs> but you're laughing at him. <laughs> uh, no, just when you say it was a five goal thriller, I'm thinking I can't even see this when it, when it was played. If I there you're right, there's a cotton game. Red result for Jim Duffy, brilliant. <laughs> Right, give us a result in League One. <laughs> give us a result in League One then. Cove one, Airdrie now, Dumbarton one, Alloa one, East Fife now, Clyde two, Montrose two, Falkirk two, Queen's Park three, Peterhead two. Give us a result in that. Can I give you the shorts for on the championship? So we'll give you the pick of League One. Queen's Park, uh, five goal, five goal thriller coming for, for uh, behind two one, uh, two one behind two, two one three two, and, and go and stay at the top end of the league. So for me. And I watched Rory. the full 90 minutes, but at the end of the day, it was a great game. Very good. Rory gives a result in League One. Um, I'll say Falkirk. I think it could be a big point in the end. Came back for 2-0 down. Got a two-each draw, last gasp. And uh, it could be a big point come the end of the season. Paulson gives a result in League One. Um. I don't know whether it's just me because I haven't I haven't looked at the stats, but I'm led to believe Clyde won two and and David Goodwillie didn't score. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. But my, my result of the day though is that one. But East Fife don't see me win every time we come on this show. It's East Fife nil. Do you know what I mean? They, they must be bought with that league. I've not got, I'm not Aye, they are. in front of me, but they must be bought with that league because they seem to get beat every week. They are bought with league, mate. All right, aye. Clyde, Clyde's result then, there you go. Right, carry on, go go for League 2, Annan 1, Edinburgh 3, Forth 3, Albion 1, Kelty 1, Shinra now, Stenhouse Muir 1, Elgin 2, and Stirling 4, Town Beast now. Give us the League 2 one, Wilson. Uh, League 2 result, I'll go Edinburgh away, Annan. I always like to mention Annan. Um, 
that's, that's a good that's a good result for them because Aaron have been doing really well recently. So Chrissy Johnson probably isn't playing if they get beat. So um, <laughs> I'll go Edinburgh. Rory League two gives a result. He'll gonna wait. He'll gonna wait. Steny two one. Thank you. Uh, still in Albion, 4 0 home to Downbeath, uh, second, second in the league as well. Very good. We'll move on to what's coming up this week. We've got two Europa League games Rangers are away to Sparta Prague. Wilson, quickly give us a prediction for Rangers away in Ch- Czech Republic. No, no. Shankers? 1 uh, 0 Rangers. Rory, Rangers away to Sparta Prague. How have, how have Prague started, Pikey? You're the stat man. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. At uh, least I'll go, on. He'll, he'll I'll need go, to edit that, though. I'll go... No, I, he'll edit it, but then he'll fucking... He'll all come the on stats and, and all the stats. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll go 3-1 Prague. What? 3-1 Prague. I'll go for a draw. I'll go 1-1. Yeah, Celtic Rangers will go to Prague and win. Uh, what is it? Do you think Rangers will go to Prague and win? Shankers? Uh, either. It's no, it's no slab. Yeah, Prague. Sparta Prague. They're the weaker one. Is that the same team they played last year? No. no. Slavia. No, the races. Who did Celtic play? It was Celtic that played them last Celtic year. Celtic no, played Sparta Prague. Celtic played, yeah, 4-1 oh. home and away, I think, wasn't it? Aye. Right, I'll oh. change my prediction. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Right, we'll move into Celtic. Have a tough game coming up against Bayer Leverkusen. Wilson, will Jeremy Frimpong stand out and he's returned to Parkhead? Well, he'll probably stand out as the second worst fullback on the pitch <laughs> uh, if Tony Ralston's playing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he will stand out, but I, th- I think Celtic have been for a hide and that. I just cannot see. I mean, I know they scored three goals in Betis, but as Rory said, that Posta Coglo's got his plan A and it's plan E all the way. And so he needs to be a bit more pragmatic. I, j- I said at the start that I think both old firm teams will struggle with the groups that were handed. Um, obviously, results from the the first games show that, albeit Leon are kind of probably a higher standard than the Europa League, being the second best team in France. Um, but I'll, I'll go Celtic to lose three one. Shankers will Celtic have a chance against Bayer Leverkusen? Nah, I can't see it. Uh, to be honest, um, this I just think that. They're too strong. They're, they're not getting into it in with any particularly good form. Uh, the only, I would say the only chance they have is because they just go gung-ho and, and the only way they seem to know now is, is attacking. So I think they can score, but they're also vulnerable at the back to, to go and concede three or four if possible. Uh, is the big boy that played against Scotland? Yeah, Patrick I, I mean... He'll be rubbing he'll be his hands. Sleepless if... nights against Camel <laughs> Vickers. <laughs> he'll be rubbing his hands if he, if he's can been looking at Celtic's last couple of results uh, playing against them. But I, I just I think my level goes not wrong for them. Is it is it Art Park there? Or it's that Celtic it Park. Yeah. Well, the disco lights might put them off though. You know, be full parties on come Thursday. Rory, give us a prediction. Will Celtic get a result at home by a Leverkusen? I quickly just checked the German league to try and gauge whether <coughs> Celtic would get. A, I know, a I know, I know that. I know the Leverkusen are sitting second. Oh, cheers, mate. Steal my thunder. <laughs> I think it's um, revenge in the Sparta Prague one. Um, sitting second, so I Celtic always. To be fair, they always seem to be able to grab a goal or two, but I think they'll be on to. Seed four. Um, uh, they'll not be on to much I think um, I'll, I'll go 2-3-1 um, defeats on Thursday quite a negative point of view but realistic <laughs> as well I think Ho- hopefully they can both get a result but I, I just can't see it BBC and SM the Scottish point that Rodri Loy is saying both teams are pissed and got humped in Europe mm-hmm. <laughs> BBC anybody was pissed I just BBC <laughs> 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 on that production I, 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 I just feel that the groups that were handed I, th- I think are tough. Now, maybe you're going from, you know, these teams of the past and all that, but if Leverkusen are starting to second in Germany, you know, Leon are got very good players, maybe not the second best team in France. Like, <laughs> I think I think we're, we're, we're on to nothing in terms of this. I, I think the biggest problem is with the coefficient is, you know, the Diddy teams, you know, like Aberdeen and that getting beat for 
you know, teams for Iceland and all that and Hibs and all these kind of teams getting beat for, you know, re- really, really teams that you've never heard of most most of the time. I think that's the biggest <laughs> I bet I've, but he said that, but the team for wherever Hibs played, have they heard the Hibs? It's the same concept in their country. Oh, absolutely. Kevin Nisbet plays for Hibs. <laughs> Hibs have, they, they, they will have, I always think these teams will have heard of Hibs because they play against Celtic or Rangers. Uh, yeah. Every country uh, you go, he plays with Celtic I don't think so, Rangers. Uh, do, you, do, uh, do you know every team that Slavia Park play against who are a massive club? Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, if I was allowed my, your if friend, I was allowed my phone, I'd be able to tell you them. <laughs> um, right. What was I going to say there? I was going to say something on that. Well, I've got, I've got a wee discussion point as well. I realise it's pretty late. Right? Right, what is it? It was just, um, it was, you posted it on the, on the page. It was just to get your thoughts on the Chris Boyd's article on Lee Griffiths this week. What, 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 what was your take on that? I never actually... I just kind of well, read. I think Chris like, Boyd and a friend, I'm, I'm not, I'm pleased, I'm not misquoting him or anything, but I think he was pretty saying, you know, if it wasn't for Lee Griffiths kind of off the field antics as such, he could have easily became, you know, one of the top goal scorers in the country. Aye, so was I. I, I know it's hard. Is it hard to maybe talk about it because of we don't know what's happening behind the scenes with Lee Griffiths? Like we've never really had a full. <clears throat> I think you need to. I think I think we can just discuss. No, no, that. I think you're just looking at stats in effect. You know. Like, because I mean, he has. I think his only yeah. rules he's kind of put out, yeah. you know, not played in Scotland with. So he's been a, at but that's Celtic a, it's a, a good point. Times. It's a good point to talk. About. Like, if Lee Griffiths was fat and healthy and happy and things like that, there's no way Celtic are sending him out more and then having that bench today. So what's, well, ha- what's that? Exactly. I mean, and you never are going to know. It was just really on Chris Boyd's point, you know, because obviously Chris Boyd's the greatest goal scorer. You know, I think, he's I, think there's the defi- I think there's definitely merit to his point. <laughs> in air. <laughs> um, in, I in, so sorry. I think there's merit to his point, but I think the thing as well is you don't know what's happened, what's happening behind the scenes, but there's definitely something happened with him at Celtic last season. Oh, but I think I think that's been a kind of across his career. I think he's had incidents when he played with Hibs as well and and whatnot. But you just wonder if he could have been consistent as such because he has, he's a talented boy. There's, there's no doubt about that. It's just <laughs> what was Boyd's point towards when you think back, think in the next 10 years, what are you, are you going to remember Lee Griffiths for his on-field performance no, I think or his Chris off-field Boyd performance? Was just saying, I don't I think from what I've seen, Chris Boyd was basically just saying, you know, I don't think he was going into delving into what might or might not have went on yeah. behind the scenes. No, he no, was no just, he, was, he, was, he was just talking about if he'd, right, if been, if he'd, been, if he'd been fit, would he be one of the greatest Scottish scores of all time, I think for me the answer is I definitely. Oh, I, I, think, def- I think definitely. I, I right. think he is after his two goals against England. I don't care what anybody says. I think he's the greatest goal scorer Scotland's ever had. Um, but I'm just, I'm just interested because obviously Chris is the, the highest scorer. Maybe not the best. You know what I mean? Um, and can I make his a couple of was ridiculous. Uh, Chris Boyd. He's, oh, he's definitely got, got a point. Like Chris Boyd. I mean, I think, I think he's as Roger said. I think he just said if he. If he if he wanted to if he if he put see if he, he was committed a hundred percent and his attitude and everything was spot on he'd be Celtic's number nine you know and 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 Scotland's number nine as well and that's the hang and obviously because he he hasn't for what for whatever reason as Pikey says a bit off field and all that and that's probably one of the reasons why he is out and loan at, at Dundee and he is not Celtic's number nine but I definitely think Chris Boyd's got a point but I, I think. Boyd said something um, before to about Griffiths. I don't know what it was because Griffiths scored once for Celtic, and I'm sure it was, was, it, was it Rugby Park. No, I'm sure it was. And he was ever and he was pointing up at the the guard. You know that, was, that doesn't help. Okay, that I, I know no. if, if he's going tying the he's, scarf at Ibrox and he's entitled to waving the Republic of Ireland flag at Ibrox. No, All these things just some things that just. Not really helping himself, but as a uh, everybody's then get get things that, that we don't we don't know about and we don't see, so it's it's hard. But um, I think hopefully he maybe goes and does does well with Dundee and he can get back. But I don't know if there's, if there's any way back for him that's healthy. No, I don't think so. It makes, it makes you question though why they gave him a new deal. Yeah, ludicrous. Like some of the supporters were were going after him. Surely but, though, like surely though, if you're a a PLC, if you've got a board of directors, and somebody must ask the question, why are you giving Lee Griffiths a year deal and send them out and loan? 
Well, that's the right. It, it, no, it, exactly it makes no right. business sense. Like it. Well, no, aye, but it's all good and well saying that. But, you know, Marvin Compare didn't make any business sense. But when you did that at that particular time, you didn't think he was going to make one appearance. So when you're giving Lee Griffiths that contract... But people risk- were saying that at the time about Griffiths, that's what I'm saying. No, but, no, were- but, it's, it's, hey, but they didn't send him on loan the next day. It's risk versus reward. Celtic were in a position where they had, they had, they they needed to get players. They weren't they making any signings. When Lee Griffiths signed his contract, like I said, it was risk versus reward. We've got somebody who potentially might score goals for us. 20 goals, you know, huh? Aye, so... You know, we can you know, we don't know what he signed. He might have signed on reduced money, reduced whatever else. So it might have made perfect business sense at that particular time. You know, it's a month, a month and a half, two months down the line, you've got a striker and it's scored six and seven or seven or eight, you know. And then Lee Griffiths is maybe no shown what you'd hoped he was shown, so you send them out on loan. So, you know, in football, there is no perfect science. You make you make a decision at the time that you think is correct. You know, I don't think necessarily it made bad business sense at that particular time because we don't know the intricacies of his contract. But do you think do you think Poster Cog was sitting there today at half time and needing a goal and going, oh, I wish I'd Lee Griffiths in the team? You, no, that's, because, what, no, that's what I'm no, trying to get at. Because no, he's a no, necessar- no necessarily. I, he, listen, would he have come on? I don't know. How many games has Poster Cogla been in charge where Lee Griffiths could have been on the bench when they needed a goal or has been on the bench and he's no brought him on? Or you know, you, you can look at all these things, but I just think at that particular time when Griffiths was given the deal, you know, I, I suppose you can't just negate any kind of debate by saying well we don't know what happened because you would never have a debate but I just think at that particular time when they had no strikers and whatever else hanging your hat on a proven goal scorer it probably was a risk worth taking at that time they've taken the risk and it's no paid off and it's very easy in hindsight to go we shouldn't have done that but you could say that about a million players and the, the one I alluded to there was, was Marvin Compere I know it's two totally different scenarios but who's Marvin Compere? exactly <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, remember at the treble, treble he was walking about with a winner's medal in his neck. I keep celebrating. Did he play with Celtic? I, I definitely don't care. Friendly brothers. Like I, I, I don't think contract at Celtic. And I don't think one he played. Game, never I seen it. Again. He maybe played like ten minutes. What was he injured or was he just? Yeah, he, was he, he got injured a, a lot, but just the never reason never I cited the reason I cited him was because you don't sign somebody at that particular time. Think, ah, you know the background and the history of Griffiths. But I still think at that particular time it was probably a risk worth taking at that particular time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's but that's what I'm saying. Like, I agree with probably signing them, but sending them out loan when you you've got your squad so bare. Like, I don't think you can always. I don't know. Wilson makes the point, which is absolutely valid about injuries and stuff. But you know, you get somebody in a five year deal, they, they you know. They, do their caffeine and the, the warm up, and yeah. you know he 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 was meant to be the guy that came on at that particular time you're talking about. You know he gets injured in the warm up. Can you write that? Do you know what I mean? No, definitely. But we're we're going to wrap up the show at that point as well. We are going to just quickly talk about what's coming up in the channel this weekend. We have the Lowland League West of Scotland and SWPL midweek action, and then we're going to have an extra show on Friday with the manager and a player from Clyde Bank. So look forward to that this week. Thanks very much to Wilson Shankers and Nori for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thanks very much. Brilliant. And oh, we'll see cheers. everyone next week. Thanks very much for watching in. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>